Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH and I am back for another VR game video. This time we're looking at a game called Poly Runner VR. And this is a game that's available on Steam and the Rift, and the, uh, Rift Store. Um, picked it up on the Rift Store for like dirt cheap the other day. And it's a neat little game. But I've had some technical issues trying to get the controller to work. Um, so you can kind of use tilt, like on the right, see? Sorry if the audio is really loud, I'm trying to get it to um, the audio to go down, but I haven't had luck with that. So I'll have to talk a little bit louder for now. But the, this, the main menu doesn't really have really good head tracking, so again I have to fudge it if I want to try to look at the menus. I have to really kind of lift my headset up and hope that I can get the menu items in the picture. We've got a big play button in the middle, and then we have normal and hard on the left. There's our difficulties. And on the right we can choose between our uh, control methods. Now, I've had some trouble getting the controller to be responsive, and the other thing that I really dislike about this is if you look at my screen right now, right below where the play button is, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny pointer, which I can sometimes make out, but I have to kind of move my head around a little bit to try to make it work. Basically, if you remember Race the Sun, it's kind of like that, in, but in VR, and there are rings that we can supposedly try to go through, but I'm just trying to dodge stuff. I don't really care about rings and scoji scores. I just want to see if I can get a fair distance and see if, in fact, I should, uh, see if I can not do that. <laughs> Again, it's a really cool premise, and I think it works really well in VR because you have that extra sense of depth that you wouldn't on a flat screen. Like, I can kind of tell how, um, how far things are away, except everything is kind of the same color, so there is that sort of blending in a Especially if there's a lot of, um, a lot of these little, I don't know, pillars, stalagmites, whatever you want to call them here. Um, these objects in a row and close to each other. Sometimes it can be, oh jeez, a little bit confusing. And basically all I'm doing is dodging. Do uh, I was going to say all I'm doing is dodging, but all I am doing is not dodging. So, in order to really um, hit the restart button, basically all I do is I know that restart is on the left, and I can kind of sometimes find my little pointer thingy, but I find that I just kind of point in the general area and keep hitting A until something happens, simply because, again, why, and, and this is not the only game to do it, there's a lot of games that are really guilty of just having a really garbage for lack of a better word, uh, pointer, like, what's wrong with having something that is easy for somebody to see? I mean, I understand you don't want it to be this ginormous, like, half of your view pointer, but, I mean, really, is it so much, really, to ask that something has fairly decent contrast and is, like, better than a spec? Um, it's just... One of those things that frustrates me is like, I would think even for a fully sighted individual, I could see where that would be rather fr- yeah, rather frustrating. Okay. So I can easily see this being something maybe that would be available on a mobile VR platform. Like you probably find this for the iPhone or Cardboard or Gear VR. Um, you could make this playable on pretty much anything. The only 
thing is, is you'd really have to make sure that you get, you know, the, the responsiveness has to be there. Um, so some, like I said, sometimes I really have trouble, trouble finding that stupid bug, finding that restart button. I'm, this is probably going to be a very short video, because there's not really a lot to say. Uh, if you're looking for something that is, you know, easy to demonstrate, like, you can have someone pick this up and know how to play it within, like, five seconds, you know, it's not hard. The only thing that I would say is a, dang it, a cautionary thing is that I'm thinking there could be some cases where, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I showed people, I showed a one or two people, um, oh, what is the name of that game? Uh, the Futuristic Tube Racer, um, not Zero G, Radial G, um, and people got motion sick from that. Now that was in first person. This one you have your ship, your little aircraft thingy to focus on. So I wonder if that would kind of negate some of that. I wonder if that would actually make it easier and maybe not. Oh, God dang it. And maybe not make somebody as susceptible to the motion sickness. But I mean, look at this cursor. I can't even hardly, f I don't even, I, I don't even see it right now. Um, I'm just gonna, <laughs> come on. Yeah, why the interface is so small is beyond me, like. I mean, this works. If I was playing this on a flat screen, this would work. But, you know, even again, you want this is a game where you you are going to play something. You're going to, um, you know, oh, you died. Boom! You just want to hit a button and you want to come right back in again. You know, I don't even know. Like, I really wouldn't even have to hit a menu item. Like, I could just hit A to you know have something in the middle that says. A to restart, B to exit. That way, you know, you know, you don't even have to aim. You just, okay, I want to play again. You know, that's what you could do. So, that's really about all there is to say. I think I'll do one. I'll play and I'll get one more halfway decent round. Oh, Jameis. Um, but yeah, this. I mean, I, I should be looking for those little... Wow, that was kind of garbage. I should be looking for those little rings and stuff. But in these games, for me anyway, I just want to survive. Like, I'll leave the rings to the pros, you know? It's like, it, if it was required and I had to keep getting rings, or and, and my, otherwise my time would run out or something, I guess then I would have to. But as far as I know, I'm not even looking... Like, I could turn my head right now, but if I do that for a nanosecond, it's over. <laughs> like, yeah, I could use VR to look around, and this is something that could easily be playable on a flat screen as well as virtual reality. Um, I mean, the depth perception is very cool and could both potentially be helpful uh, for the game, but this is something that could easily and has easily been demonstrated that it could be done. Oh, I wasn't sure which way to dodge. Um, you know, like I said, Race the Sun is a very similar concept. And actually, I did a video for a game, I don't even remember the name of it right now. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't unlocked the video as I'm recording this right now, but by the time you probably see this one, I will have covered another kind of a futuristic racing game where it's like on this really kind of Tron looking background thing. Um, and that was actually pretty cool too. So, which also kind of reminds me of this conversation I saw a couple of people on Twitter having the other day, and I chipped in, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, people always in, whether it's virtual reality or flat screen or whatever game it is, you know, there's always this kind of 
going to urge that people want to go for photorealism. And there is some merit to that. There is something amazing to be like, wow, I can't believe this is a game, or I can't believe like this looks so real. I get caught up in that, oh geez, that to some degree as well. But I would say that I actually really, really like, and sometimes almost prefer, a stylized it could be some shading, it could be, you know, oh wow, that was really spectacularly terrible. Um, let me see if I can get in here again. Um, you know, there's just something to be said for a really great art style carrying something and almost, have, like, you can still get sucked into, you know, people think, oh, it has to be photorealistic, otherwise I won't get sucked into an, an environment. I can say that's, oh, Jesus, further from the truth. Like, look at all, look at all Nintendo's games. Like, it's so easy, even on a flat screen, to get sucked into those worlds. Um, you know, look at the Wii, the Wii U. Look at how low-powered they are compared to even last-gen consoles, like the 360 and PS3. Um, but then, you know, they have some mighty fine... Look at how good Mario Kart 8 looks. Look at how good a lot of these first-party Nintendo uh, games look. And if you can have a great art style to, to back it up, to carry... Oh, jeez. To uh, back it up... Oh, that can go a long way. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to try and get a halfway decent run, and then we're going to call it, because there's not, again, there's not, wow, that was not a decent run by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we are going to wrap it up, because there's not a lot to say. But I just figured, like I said, this is a fairly cheap VR game that is fun. It showcases, like I said, the depth that you can do in VR with a very simple concept. Even though it's a fast-paced game, you could, you know, put a headset on somebody and say, Here, use the left analog stick to steer. Go. Um, point, if you can actually see the dang cursor, point at your... Uh, like to retry and to start and otherwise that's it so yeah we're actually doing a fairly decent run knock on wood oh son of a i say that and what happens death anywho uh yeah that is uh just a quick peek now that i can actually look around at this uh environment because i haven't yeah yeah things move up and down that sucks um Poly Runner VR. It is available on Steam as well, if I, re if I recall. Um, but uh, I picked it up on the Oculus Store. I don't re remember the price exactly, but it's not very expensive. That's why I decided to pick it up. And uh, yeah, it is actually pretty fun. Simple, but uh, fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. And until next time, I will talk to you guys I will talk to you guys again later.